We are here today at NASA headquarters in Washington, D.C. for a press briefing on a report from an independent study team on unidentified anomalous phenomena. We have four speakers here today. We have Bill Nelson, our NASA administrator, Nikki Fox, the associate administrator for the Science Mission Directorate, Dan Evans, the assistant deputy associate administrator for research, within the Science Mission Directorate, and David Spurgle, who is the president of the Simons Foundation and was also the chair of this particular independent study team. Uh, I will ask everybody in the room to please silence your cell phones. Uh, we will get started with uh, everybody giving a few opening remarks, and then we will take questions. We will take questions both in the room and then from the phones. And for now, I will hand it over to the administrator. Thanks so much, and thanks for coming today. NASA searches for the unknown in air and space. It's in our DNA. From digging on Mars with the Perseverance rover in those little titanium tubes that we intend to go back and pick up, digging in a dry lake bed near the mouth of a river, now we're going up to the top of the cliff where uh, the scientists feel that there could be the best uh, examples of if there were life there millions of years ago. Uh, whether we're dealing with Perseverance or the James Webb Space Telescope, which searches for exoplanets with signs of habitability, we are looking for signs of life, past and present. And it's in our DNA to explore and to ask why things are the way they are. In June of last year, NASA commissioned an independent study team to examine unidentified anomalous phenomena. We did so with a few goals in mind. First, to examine how NASA can use our expertise and instruments to study UAP from a scientific perspective. Second, shift the conversation about UAP from sensationalism to science. And to make sure that whatever we find or whatever we recommend to make sure that information is shared transparently around the world. There's a global fascination with UAP. On my travels, one of the first questions I often get is about these sightings. And much of that fascination is due to the unknown nature of it. Think about it, most UAP sightings result in very limited data. That makes it even more difficult to draw scientific conclusions about the nature of UAP. And so this independent study team brought together some of the world's leading scientists, data, and artificial intelligence experts, aerospace safety specialists, all with a specific charge from me, which is to tell how to apply the full focus of science and data to UAP. And this is the first time that NASA has taken concrete action to seriously look into UAP. Uh, and this independent study team was just that, independent. Now, NASA has a statutory authority to look for life in the universe. And when you think of the universe, and especially what we have learned from the James Webb Space Telescope, how vast that it is. We knew before, and it was a NASA scientist, Dr. John Mather, who got the Nobel uh, that determined that the universe was 13.8 billion years old. 
and over the years, particularly accelerated in the last century, uh, we have an understanding that, of course, ours is not the only galaxy. And there are billions and billions of galaxies, and each of those galaxies, including our own, have billions and billions of stars. And with the James Webb looking at the exoplanets, we are now beginning to discover, and somewhere out there, we will discover another medium-sized stony planet around a medium-sized sun or star at just the right distance, not too far, not too close, with a tilt in its axis that rotates, that has carbon, that will have a habitable atmosphere. If you ask me, do I believe there's life in a universe that is so vast that it's hard for me to comprehend how big it is? My personal answer is yes. But I asked some of our scientists, as a matter of fact, uh, the Washington Post editorial board asked us to come down to the question, what is the mathematical probability that there is life out there in the universe? And if you calculate in billions of stars, in billions of galaxies, that there's replicated what I just said, another stony planet. The answer was, what's the likelihood? At least a trillion. That's from our scientist. So we start this without any preconceived notions, but understanding that we're in a world of discovery. And we have taken, we NASA have taken for the first time concrete action to seriously look into UAP. And this independent study team is exactly that. It's independent. They work to develop recommendations about how NASA could better examine them from a scientific perspective. And the top takeaway from the study is that there is a lot more to learn. The NASA independent study team did not find any evidence that UAP have an extraterrestrial origin, but we don't know what these UAP are. That's why I'm announcing that NASA has appointed a NASA director of UAP research. They are being tasked with developing and overseeing the implementation of NASA's vision for UAP research. We will use NASA's expertise to work with other agencies to analyze UAP. We will use AI and machine learning to search the skies for anomalies as we have been searching the heavens and will continue to search the heavens for habitability. And NASA will do this transparently. So while today is a significant step for NASA, it's certainly not our final step. And we're gonna share more with you and I want to introduce you to Dr. Nikki Fox, who is the head of our science mission directorate. Nikki. <clears throat> Good morning, and thank you so much, Administrator Nelson. It's always tough to follow Bill. He's such a great speaker. Um, but I want to thank the uh, independent uh, study team for um, their amazing service on the study and for their continued contributions towards the advancement of our nation's understanding of unidentified anomalous phenomena. 
UAP, as, as Bill just eloquently said, UAP are one of our planet's greatest mysteries, and it's really due to the limited number of high-quality data that surrounds such incidents and often renders them unidentifiable. While there are numerous eyewitness accounts and visuals associated with UAP, they're not consistent, they're not detailed, and they're not curated observations that can be used to make definitive scientific conclusions about the nature and the origin of UAP. The language of scientists is data, and data points towards a scientific conclusion to what the nature and the origin of UAP could be. That leads us to why we're here today. The independent study team's report is now public and it can be found at uh, NASA, uh, sorry, science.nasa.gov slash UAP. While NASA is still working to evaluate the report and to assess the independent study team's finding and recommendations, NASA is committed to immediately contributing to the federal government's unified UAP effort and as you heard, we have appointed a director of UAP research. In their role, uh, they will centralize communications, resources, and data analytical capabilities across the federal government to establish a robust database for the uh, evaluation of any future data. Additionally, our director of UAP research will also leverage NASA's expertise in artificial intelligence, machine learning, and space-based observation tools that will support and enhance the broader government initiative into UAP. They will serve as NASA's point of contact for government entities, but especially for the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, or ARO. And this will ensure our co uh, coordinated efforts and effective communication channels. Beyond our director of UAP research, uh, NASA will also advance citizen reporting by working with the public and commercial pilots to collect a broader set of data to add to the, uh, the vast data repositories to not only contribute to a broader, more reliable data set for future UAP incidents, but to also contribute to the destigmatization of the important study of UAPs. And with that, it is my great pleasure to hand over to Dr. Dan Evans, who is the uh, NASA official responsible for supporting this amazing study. Good morning. I'd like to begin by expressing my sincere thanks to NASA Administrator Bill Nelson for directing this study. We at NASA believe that understanding UAP is vital for several reasons. First and foremost, it provides an opportunity for us to expand our understanding of the world around us. At NASA, we are committed to charting the uncharted, so this work aligns with who we are. Secondly, this study aims to enhance situational awareness. The presence of UAP raises serious concerns about the safety of our skies. And it's this nation's obligation to determine whether these phenomena pose any potential risks to airspace safety. Let's not forget that the first A in NASA is aeronautics. So by understanding the nature of UAP, we can ensure that our skies remain a safe space for all. Administrator Nelson directed us to put together an independent and external team of world-leading experts to produce a report containing a roadmap with a series of recommendations that describe how NASA could best help in the cross-government response to UAP. Months of meticulous fact-finding, cross-disciplinary collaboration, and scientific rigor gave the team insights that will greatly enhance our nation's understanding of UAP going forward. The team's report, now available on NASA's website, stands as a testament to NASA's and the team's commitment to transparency, to the power of science, and to the unwavering quest for knowledge. We at NASA believe that studying UAP represents an exciting step forward in our journey to uncover the mysteries of the world around us. By embracing a scientific lens, we have ensured that our work is evidence-based 
and data-driven. And by valuing transparency and openness, we have aimed to foster trust and collaboration with the public. I'd like to conclude by extending my deepest gratitude to the team for their incredible dedication and service. Their efforts have been instrumental, and I truly appreciate the expertise and commitment that each of them have brought to this endeavor. And with that, I'll pass over to Dr. David Spergel, who chaired our study. First and foremost, I'd like to extend our sincere gratitude to the NASA Administrator for entrusting us with this pivotal study. Your faith in our capabilities has been a driving force behind the panel's approach. The panel's comprehensive study into unidentified anomalous phenomena, our UAP, has led to several crucial findings, and I'd like to elucidate on our methodology and those findings this morning. We began by rigorously assessing the current state of UAP data. Our goal was not to repeat the work of our, the Arrow, but to understand the nature of the reports. Our goal was to produce a roadmap for NASA to contribute to the understanding of the nature of UAP events. We looked at NASA's assets. While they provide a comprehensive picture of the ocean, the Earth's surface and atmosphere for studying our evolving planet, they typically do not have the resolution needed for UAP events. However, by providing data on environmental conditions, they can complement other data on UAP. The current approach to UAP data collection has led to a limited sample of events and limited data. Stigma has limited reporting by pilots, both civilian and military, so we know there's missing data. For its analysis in other areas, NASA always takes a scientific approach of systematic data collection that involves calibrating instruments, multiple measurements, and ensuring sensor metadata. Most UAP events lack this quality of data. One of NASA's contribution to the broader governmental effort to bring these methodologies to create a data set is to bring these methodologies to create a data set that's both reliable and extensive. And once we have a, well, a set large sample of well-characterized events, um, AI and ML tools, which are proving to be powerful in so many other applications, will likely prove helpful in identifying interesting anomalies. It is essential to clarify, based on our current findings and methodology, that we find no evidence to suggest that UAP are extraterrestrial in origin. Our focus is understanding the phenomenon, however, regardless of the source. And previous work from the ARO has shown that most events are explainable as planes, balloons, drones, weather phenomenon, and instrument features. And in any search for interesting anomalies, the first step is to eliminate the chaff of conventional events before moving on to identify novel phenomena. In this, the public's role cannot be overstated. The panel envisioned a framework that leverages crowdsourcing, possibly via smartphone applications, to capture a broader spectrum of data, ensuring more eyes and ears on the ground. Lastly, we delved into the safety concerns UAP present within US airspace. By integrating UAP collection within our current aviation reporting system, the panel believes we can provide insights into potential safety risks. NASA can reduce the stigma associated with pilots reporting anomalies. And fundamentally, by studying events we don't understand, we advance our understanding. So in conclusion, with a rigorous methodology, collaborative efforts, public engagement, NASA can be a key player in the whole of government approach to understanding UAP. Thank you.